Hello everyone, welcome to SAS via platform administration. This is your facilitator, Ravi K. And um, I assume while uh, going through these videos, um, I hope you're already aware of SAS platform administration, um, 9, 9x version. And uh, in, in these uh, tutorial or, or these videos, you are going to uh, learn about SAS uh, via platform administration. So let me, let's quickly start what exactly is SaaS via platform, right? Um, SaaS via platform is like a quick, quickly transform raw data into operational insights that support every kind of decision your organization wants to make. And uh, it's an AI analytical and data management platform that runs on modern scalable architecture. So we will um, go through the architecture in the next slides, uh, coming slides. And, uh, um, it's it's a it's a platform analytical platform that is developed on latest SaaS software. Um, the the software package that is uh, that is that you are going to receive from SaaS uh, Institute is a is is in a package container container images and deployed to Kubernetes clusters, which enables you to uh, uh, run different methods of deploying the software and um, and and provide you different ways to monitor your environment and, uh, and different tools to uh, enable you to uh, do the analytic, analytics and AI uh, using this platform. Uh, let's start uh, talking about what are the new features uh, that are introduced in this as via platform. The key administrative features that you see here um, that are introduced in the latest version of SaaS via 3.5 um, uh, are uh, the disk and memory footprint of SAS via has been reduced, right? Which which enables you to um, um, do more processing. Much of this has been achieved by combining combining microservices, right? In a certain SAS environment, SAS environment manager views, you can see all of them uh, uh, services. The second one would be promoting content from SAS via to SAS via is enhanced with the new inventory plugin that has been enabled for SaaS admin, which is like a command line interface. Then a new health check service uh, is provided as a SaaS admin plugin in the SaaS admin manager. Licensed users can use the job flow scheduler in the jobs and flow section of SaaS admin manager to create and manage complex flows. The entry jobs in environment manager becomes job and flows um if you have a job SaaS job flow scheduler license available in your SAS software package if not uh, that you have to receive or else you have to use a third party job uh, schedulers uh, to enable your jobs to schedule and run at a particular time then also jobs uh, for scheduling or including in the flows can be created from a SAS step uh, data program or a step program in your SAS studios that has been enabled here uh, the contents of uh, the application menu are also has been enhanced and uh, SAS via supports additional import file systems such as Parquet and Arc, uh, which are not available earlier, uh, which uh, which we are going to get using SAS via platform. And uh, Kerberos contained delegation restrictions are also enabled uh, for uh, SAS via platform. And uh, encryption at uh, at, at encryption for data has been enabled, which will enable you to uh, uh, do SaaS uh, TLS on Linux and Windows operating environments and uh, provide uh, provide a better security and, uh, um, and and it provide high level of security um, depending on the operating system that you're using. SaaS might need to use other uh, uh, ciphers. SaaS via also supports TLS on object spawner. Right and uh, and uh, SaaS uh, via platform, the new platform also enabled um, uh, new authentication methods such as Kerberos content delegation, new authorization techniques. That is command and interface uh, to uh, CAS authorization, which is um, um, cloud analytical server that is newly introduced uh, in SaaS via platform. And uh, and there are command line interfaces that are enabled for SaaS via system, 
um, uh, to monitor the machines and services uh, with a new health check plugin that is available for uh, SaaS admins in the SaaS and manager. So we we'll learn about these uh, all in the uh, coming uh, slides, uh, but uh, but these are the key administrative features that are introduced uh, in the SaaS uh, 3.5 platform. So uh, in, in this slide, I'm going to talk about um, the SaaS web platform uh, reference architecture, right? Um, as you can see, uh, uh, the, the first part is the gem server or gateway server, which is for SaaS, uh, 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 SAS by administrator for cluster administrators to uh, to to log into the uh, servers and uh, and enable the uh, uh, or maintain the platform. So administrators access the SAS via platform through this jump server uh, and the gateway. Uh, a cluster which is a Kubernetes administrator deploys and updates the SAS via platform software and keeps the platform. Um, cluster operational all the time a client uh, with the uh, kubernetes command line command line tool also is installed which is required to uh, deploy the software and update software as and when required it has um via platform administrator uses mainly the environment manager right uh, to to do all the administrator activities and other tools that are provided by sas to manage the entire sas via platform uh, environment Second part is the third party identity and cross access uh, access management. The third party third party identity and access management provides providers are integrated with SaaS via platform authentication, which is already which is which will enable us to um, authenticate the platform. These several layers of security prevent unauthorized access to the SaaS via platform, and uh, routing services are also configured with the IP addresses or user IDs. Um, of authorized uh, external user accounts that are allowed to bypass the ingress. Then uh, the third one is the topology of uh, SaaS via platform, uh, which is shown uh, here uh, with uh, four different nodes in a single namespace, right? You can see the namespace and uh, four different uh, uh, node, node poles. That has pla via platform software consists of workload classes that are identified by the work that is performed by the associated parts, stateless um, or uh, stateful CAS, CAS node pool or computer or a compute node pool. Then uh, fourth one is a SaaS web platform monitoring uh, for Kubernetes, uh, whereas uh, this provides logging and monitoring uh, uh, tools that are designed specifically for SaaS web platform. And uh, we'll, we'll learn about more about uh, this as via monitoring in the coming slides. Uh, lastly, you have this ingress controller, uh, which will enable uh, you to access the software of uh, SaaS via platform for developers and users. Right. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide where we are going to, uh, I'm going to show, show you a, a different architectures that are enabled for different uh, uh, cloud providers, right? Uh, the SaaS platform is a cloud native analytics platform on which latest software offerings are from SaaS are built and run. So um, SaaS offerings are delivered uh, as a set of container images that are deployed onto um, into an Azure Kubernetes service, AKS, or uh, Google Cloud, or um, uh, AWS, Amazon Web Services. So here in this uh, in this in this slide, you are seeing the architecture architecture SaaS via SaaS SaaS via architecture on Microsoft Azure, right? Uh, as you can see, as you can see here the uh, the reference diagram for uh, SAS by on Microsoft Azure is almost same as uh, uh, reference architecture. Uh, whereas um, first part uh, where we are going to create an Azure resource group that contains all the resources that are required to provide access to the 
to the users and also a storage uh, component for this as a platform to run. The term uh, primary uh, resource is used uh, to identify this resource group separately from the resource group that contains the resources for the for the SaaS via platform, right? And in this diagram, different groupings are shown to identify access, uh, cloud native storage, and network storage. And the second part, as you already um, um, talked about in the before uh, previous slide, right? The cloud. Uh, SaaS administrators or cluster administrators use uh, to log in, which is a jump server and a gateway uh, that is used to log into the uh, servers. Then the third part is the cloud native services, which provides operational persistent storage for the SaaS web platform. And here uh, Azure Post, GreSQL, and Azure Container um, uh, Registry (ACR) are shown. Then uh, fourth part is the cloud native service provider operational persistent storage for SaaS via platform um, uh, and a network network file system NFS, which is used uh, are shown here as a required persistent storage for the SaaS via platform. Then the fifth part is uh, the, 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 the same component that we uh, saw earlier. Azure Resource Group contains the SaaS resources, and this is used to optimize the workload balance. Uh, a full type full topology is shown across four nodes here: um, stateless node pool, stateful node pool, CAS node pool, compute node pool, and the system node pool um, here. The SaaS web platform consists of workload classes that are identified by the work that is performed by the associated pods. Right to manage the workload node tains and labels are associated to control the scheduling. Then the sixth part here is the ingress. An ingress controller enables access to the software for SaaS developers and users. So we also need to note here that a connection to an identity provider is not shown, um, either an LDAP uh, or a system, and a system for cross domain identity management are supported which can be used to uh, develop the uh, or, or set up this as uh, via platform and monitoring uh, here. Next, uh, let's move on to Amazon uh, Web Services. The architecture that you're seeing here is on the uh, Amazon Web Services. So the, the SaaS web platform, again, is, is built um, in, with the the set of uh, container images that are deployed with Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Services, which is EKS, right? Uh, and uh, here uh, the diagram illustrates uh, the interactions between SaaS web platform and the AWS resources. As you can see um, here, we are again creating a primary uh, service group that contains the services that provides access to and storage for the SaaS web platform. Again, the primary is um, used to identify this group separately from the grouping that contains the resources for the SaaS via platform. And in this diagram, different groupings are shown. Uh, you can see identity access, uh, cloud native storage, and network storage. Again, um, uh, cl cluster, the second part is the cluster administrators or SaaS administrators used uh, to access the uh, platform and uh, uh, deploy or update any 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 new uh, versions or new updates to the SaaS web platform. Then uh, the cloud native services, uh, which provides operational persistent storage to the SaaS web platform. Here, uh, Amazon, Amazon uh, Rational Database Service, RDS, and Elastic Container Registry, ECR, are shown. Then Elastic uh, File System, Amazon Elastic File System, e EFS, and a Network File System, NFS, are shown as required persistent storage for the SaaS web platform. Then the fifth part, as you are already aware, uh, which is a resource group uh, uh, which contains uh, these resources to optimize the workloading balance and uh, the, the topology of uh, uh, four different or five different node groups. Then the ingress um, is also mentioned here, uh, which is used for SaaS developers and users. Right. This is about Amazon Web Services. 
let's move on to uh, SaaS via on Google Cloud Platform, which is GCP. Again, um, uh, the SaaS offerings are uh, which are developed um, and con container images that are deployed for Google Kubernetes engine GKE. Right, the, the this this diagram gives you an, uh, information about uh, how it is being set up. Let's uh, let's see. Again, a service group, primary service group is created here. Again, a primary service group, uh, a primary is referred to the group, which is to separate uh, the group from the other resources. And then uh, again, administrator, uh, which uses jump server and gateway to log into the um, uh, servers and to do the to do deploy and update the SaaS software and keeps the clusters operational all the time. Again, here at cloud native services like ch such as uh, Cloud SQL for PostgreSQL and uh, Google Container Registry GCR are shown. And uh, native uh, uh, cloud native storage, which is file, file store and network network file system NFS are shown um, uh, as a required persistent storage. Uh, then fifth one, uh, to optimize the workload balance and uh, uh, four, node, four or five node pools are shown here uh, for uh, SaaS platform to work on the uh, load that is being set up uh, or, or uh, associated performed uh, with the pods. Then ingress uh, service, which is for the software, uh, SaaS, SaaS software developers and users. So with this uh, different types of architectures, you uh, uh, we have now aware how the setup is done, and uh, and uh, let's let's start with the um, SaaS platform installation. Um, to to start with the SaaS via platform installations, uh, you need to know um, the deployment part, right? Uh, which is uh, which is common for either Linux machine, Windows machine, or containerized setup. Uh, first, we need to understand the system requirements. Um, then uh, we we talk about the installation steps. Then we do the installations, post-installation task, validating the deployment, completing the deployment. And uh, once the deployment is complete, we have to manage the SaaS software, right? Um, uh, to ensure everything is up to date, licenses are up to date, any upgrades that are uh, seen in the system that is that are also updated, etc. And um, uh, deployment also consists of an installation that uh, we talked in the last, and any troubleshooting that we need to do when the installation or deployment is happening. steps for successful deployment, right? First, we have to, uh, in order for us to successfully deploy the platform, um, we have first have to understand where we are deploying it. The SaaS wire platform is deployed to a Kubernetes cluster on a supported cloud platform, either Amazon or Azure or Google Cloud. And we can also do this uh, setup on a local machines. And the resources that are used by the SaaS software are provisioned before the deployment, right? Um, SAS maintains infrastructure as a code, IAC, GitHub project, uh, GitHub projects that contain scripts and configuration files that automatically provision the infrastructure, including the creation of Kubernetes cluster. SAS uh, mainly recommends the use of the IAC projects, in infrastructure as a code projects for Microsoft Azure, on Amazon uh, Web Services, Google Platform, and any upstream open source Kubernetes that we use. And uh, whenever uh, uh, to have a successful deployment, so these are the three steps that we need to uh, follow uh, to ensure uh, we are doing it clearly, which is prepare for the deployment. Meaning we have to meet all the system requirements, um, understand the requirement uh, requirements for Kubernetes, customize 
Kubernetes, hardware resources, security, and more. Understand the workload that we need to uh, that we are going to put on the system, and then um, get the uh, workload planned and uh, required labels and tames. Get the deployment assets. What are the deployment assets that are required to deploy, and uh, that are and the files that are required to deploy for the software uh, need to ensure. And if you are enabling a multi-tenant environment, we need to ensure that multi-tenant environment is also set up and uh, ready. And uh, while performing the uh, deployment, we need to per uh, while performing, uh, we need to ensure everything is in ready. Um, uh, are we doing it? Uh, the internet is uh, working fine or not? Any, and there, there shouldn't be any network disruption while right? while doing the installation on the cloud environment. Uh, we should have enough uh, space, enough size, enough memory, enough for CPU utilization to perform the deployment. There shouldn't be any disruptions. And uh, and and for us uh, for us, for the successful deployment uh, at the end of a deployment, we have to validate and ensure the deployment is successfully completed and uh, and uh, hand it over to the users. When we are doing a full deployment, this is how uh, it looks like, right? Uh, 